Thank you, man of God, for the introduction. Uh, beyond me, when I registered for this conference, I did not know that my mentor would cross over to heaven on January the 1st, 2019. So on this day, I stand with a heavy heart, but I stand to deliver the sermon that I preached on the second Sunday of December at my father's church, the Church of Union Missionary Baptist Church in Hot Springs, Arkansas, where the late Pastor Douglas C. Jones was the pastor for 27 years, six months, seven hours, and 29 minutes. You see, God knew I loved him, but God loved him and needed him more. So please pray my strength as God lays his hands on me and my spiritual father looks down on me. If you would, turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 25. For those that are scholars and want to read when you get to your room. But for the sake of time, I'll be reading verses 23 through 25. And it reads these words in the New Living Translation Bible. It says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Verse 25, it reads, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his returning is drawing near. You do know, church, <laughs> that the day is drawing near. Uh, I met a brother when I got here, just ironic that he's old National Baptist Convention boy, just like myself. It's just ironic that he's preaching right now, just like myself. And it's very ironic that his church is also Union Missionary Baptist Church. And it's also ironic that this young man told me that while he sat in, at the sacred desk on New Year's, at 1155, his cousin of 31 years passed. It's also ironic that he went on and let me know that six pastors were rushed to the hospital in Albany, Georgia. Church, it's time to pray. So today, if you will go with me, for those of you that are title-driven, my sermon topic for today is when the church begins to pray. When the church begins to pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this preaching opportunity, Father God. Thank you for this day that was ordained when I came out of my mother's womb, Father God. Thank you for all the mentors, all the great men and women of God that I've been upon since I've been here, God. And thank you for the women that I'm sandwiched between, Father God, right now. So God, anything that's not like you, remove it. Anything that you do not want said, please shut my mouth. Now hide me behind your cross so people will not see me but only hear you. Before I start, I'd like to thank my wife, my mom, my dad, my mother in the gospel, my godmom, and the catering of preachers for getting me here today. And also Delta and their employees for making sure I got here and they gave me a great discount. Thank you, Andre Slay. Thank you. In the course of my 32 years of life, I have noticed a very important act of worship declining. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, I know the times are changing and everything is done via technology and social media. But how many of us can testify and stand with me by saying, the God I serve has been too good to me not to praise him and pray to him. The God I serve has been too good. My sister just said he gave you scholarships. I know God to be a healer. He healed my sister of cancer not one time, but two times. The same God that healed my sister for cancer gave my daddy a kidney when I didn't even know he needed a kidney. 
The same God healed me of a staph infection when all the other football players were going to the hospital. That's the God I serve. You see, prayer can be defined as a solemn request for help. Our expression of thanks addressed to God are an object of worship. In the book titled Chasing Grace, Sonia Richards Ross states, prayer is an essential element of every phase, and it does deserve practice. You see, just like walking, when you take your first step, you fall. So guess what? In this Christian journey, we're going to stumble, we're going to fall. But you best believe God will bring you to your knees if you don't take yourself to your knees. So today, I want to admonish you to get on your knees before God will put you there. Because God will put you on your knees and he'll put you on your back. Oh, my God. Prayer is, is an essential element of every phase, and it does deserve practice. She then goes on to say that every journey's beginning, middle, and end is richer and sweeter when shared with God. When you pray, you ask God to intervene and then submit to his will through gratitude and admission. You ask him to take away your burdens and by your faithfulness, trust him to do it. How many of us today are burdened? How many of us came to the Academy of Preachers with broken hearts? How many of us have some family members at home that are going through hell? How many of us live in hell? How many of us, my God, are sick in our bodies? How many of us don't know if we can go to college next semester? I've been there. I sat in a classroom and with no payment. I could not see my grades, but the teacher said, keep coming. We'll hand you your grades. The school said you can't come. The teacher said, keep coming. But that was all because my faith and hope in God. Saints of God and my AOP family, it's important for us to note that prayer frees us from worry, doubt, and fear. Prayer fills you with hope and reminds you of your greater purpose. AOP, let's pause for a moment. And I, my sister just talked about breakfast. And I, I, I highly, I, I, I'm not against it at all. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. However, I digress. I don't think it is. I don't like breakfast. But this morning when I rose, I had no doubt that I needed something in my spiritual system. So I went downstairs. They gave me a menu. And they said, the buffet is $24.99. I said, mm, sounds so good. But baby, I can't eat breakfast right now. I'll be back when I get done preaching. So I said, I need a smoothie. I just need, she said, that's all you need? Yes, that's all I need. And bring my water with no ice. With no ice. They brought me cold water still. I said, that's not going to work. So she told my man here, your boy's a piece of work. I said, yeah, I am. But breakfast to you is different for me. My breakfast, as I told my brother this morning, is me waking up every morning. Because God called me to this ministry when I was working out. Early, early one April morning. My God, early, early. I said, God, I don't want this journey. He said, son, you've been running too long. I said, God, just like Jesus said, if you slap me on one cheek, I'm going to turn the other one. You slap me because I'm not going to do this. He said, son, I've knocked you out. It's time to stop running. This is your journey. This is your path. So I accepted the calling that day, and I was running, you guys. And when I looked around at the mile marker, it said zero. Take note of this. My late pastor, thank you, Lord, told me one day in one of his sermons, he called me in. He said, sir, me and my dad and one other guy, he said, who wants this candy? No one wanted the candy. You know, they wanted to be fit. They wanted to be fine. They didn't want the candy bar, but they missed their blessing. They missed their blessing because he gave us two pieces of candy. He said, zero in on your target because your payday is coming. Thank the Lord. I zeroed in on my target. My father is gone, but my payday is here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ. So AOP. My family, 
it's important that we know our purpose. Our purpose was not this week, wasn't to come here and find a boo or a bay. It wasn't to come to party and shop. Because I'm telling you, when I, they said party, I was like, okay, the preacher's having a party? Interesting. And I went down there, y'all. They were playing the piano, singing and shouting. And I said, boy, and these people saved, sanctified, and oh, filled with the Holy Ghost, fire baptized. These are some real preachers. Y'all know I've been looking for real preachers all my life. I've been looking for some all my life that are around in my circle. I got some fathers that were preachers. I got some uncles that were preachers. But thank you, AOP, for some real men and women of God. It wasn't to come so we can check out the beautiful city to see where we're going to stay for the Super Bowl when the Pittsburgh Steelers make it. But, mm, and our purpose for preaching isn't about the money, clothes, and cars. Not to step on anybody's toes, but it's not to become the next T.D. Jakes. It's not to become the next Freddie Haynes. It's not to become the next Paul S. Morton. And it's not to become the next John Gray. But our purpose, say but, but say but, but our purpose is to serve and give glory to God. If you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, I brought just a little Bible with me today. Brought, brought just a little Bible. And in Psalm 66 and 20, it says, Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Philippians 4 and 6 goes on and says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then and finally, Galatians 4 and 2 says, devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Three questions. Are we devoted? Hmm. Are we watching? Are we thankful? You see, Jesus doesn't always answer our prayers in the way we want them to be answered. But he does answer them. Sometimes an answer is no. Sometimes an answer is not now. Sometimes an answer is be patient, my child. Trust in me. Lean on me. Mm, my God. Then, do not worry about anything. How many of us are worrying? How many of us are playing the lottery? How many of us are selling dope? How many of us are doing the things of the world to pay for our habits and our addictions. Because God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. He said our needs, not our wants. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Who are we telling? Are we telling our pastor? Are we telling our mentors? Are we telling our mom? Are we telling our dad? Are we telling our heavenly father? Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. See, many a times we get to the point we get what we want from God and we forget to tell him thank you. But I thank God for getting me here. I thank God for waking me up this morning in my right mind. I thank God for my saving grace. I thank him for forgiving me of all my sins because I know God knows I was a wretch undone. Wasn't fit to live and sure wasn't ready to die. My God, my God. Then it says, praise be to God. Are we praising God? Or has the church stopped praying? This morning, my, my spirit was uneased because a group of us prayed. And my spirit was uneased because only three men were at prayer. But the word of God says where two or three are gathered, I would be in the midst. And when I tell you we pray like never before, we pray like never before. So Jesus, just for a moment, there are three ways, there are three ways we can pray. Just in case you don't know how to pray. We can pray in a group at the altar. We can pray in our pastor circle. We can pray as individuals. We can pray as two people together. We can have corporate prayer. We can have out loud prayer. 
This morning I came in this place. I walked around this building. I stood right here at this sacred desk, and I anointed this altar. The young lady that, that, that manages this place, she came in just to make sure everything was all right. So I had individual out loud prayer, and I didn't care who heard me. Because for God I live and for God I die. And then, most importantly, we can walk around. And when everybody think everything is good, or when everybody think all hope is lost, when all hell is breaking loose, when, when 45 is in office, when your bills are not paid, when you're sick in your body, when you just can't say anything, you can pray silently to our Father. Mm -mm -mm. And last but not least, Sonia once stated, life on earth, on this earth, as I learned through running the 400 tests, your mind, body, and spirit. And the most important thing you can do at every point is pray without ceasing. Sometimes you may struggle to know what to pray for or even how to pray. But the key is constant communication. For those of you that are married, how many have called home this week? How many are face time this week? I have a one-year-old daughter, a 14-year-old with cerebral palsy, a dog named Boom, and a beautiful wife of two and a half years. And if I wouldn't have called home, you best believe the doors would have been locked. So my question to you, if you want a relationship with God, when is the last time you prayed to him? If you want your church to be filled, when is the last time you prayed about the doors being open? When is the last time we got on our knees to pray? Now, I know it's hard. We don't understand. We don't know the way. We don't know what to pray. But the word of God tells me two things. In 23rd number of Psalms, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thou rod and thy staff, thou comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And then, and then, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he understood, AOP, that I cannot do this alone. I cannot. This world is too big, and this is not my home. So on my way home, I picked 12 good men to walk with me. I picked 12 good men to talk with me. But they said, Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we serve you. But Jesus, we just don't know how to pray like you. So Jesus said, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked, son. I'm glad you asked, Peter. I'm glad you asked, old Dalton Thomas. I'm glad you asked, Judith. This is what I want you to do from this day on, AOP. These are not my words. These are the words of God. And God said, Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.